Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 we are working in module 2, lesson number 27. And we are doing the same thing we were doing yesterday, which is we are dividing decimal dividends by two digit divisors. We are estimating our quotients from time to time. We are reasoning about the placement of the, of the decimal point, and we are making connections to the written method or standard algorithm. So I'm going to go over two problems today. One's a straightforward uh, mechanical problem, and the other is a, more of a word problem. And we'll see if we, that can get you going on some of your homework. Let's take a look at problem number one. Directions are really simple. Divide. Check your work with multiplication. And we're given a pretty simple problem. Uh, it's 51 divided by 25. Now, one of the things that we need to do is we need to set it up properly. We need to think about which parts of which part of this is our whole. Let's see. Our dividend right there is 51. So we're going to set it up. There's our whole. And we are dividing it into groups of 25. So our divisor is 25. Awesome. Now, with all division problems, we're just going to go place by place through our whole, right, and figure out if we can do the division. So let's see. Let's look just at our, at our tens. We have five tens. Do we have enough tens to make groups of 25 yet? Yeah, I don't see that, right? We, don't, we only have five. We can't make a group of 25. So let's think about this as ones. 51 ones. Can we make groups of 25 out of 51 of something? Oh, sure, right. We could make, let's see, one, two. I think we can make two groups. Two groups, and now that we're working in ones. If we made two groups, we would use up or distribute 2 times 25 or 50 of our ones. That just leaves one of our ones. Okay. Now, again, in the past, we might have said, okay, we've got a quotient of 2, a remainder of 1, we're done. But this time we're using decimals. And so I'm trying to think to myself, let's see. I see the tens, and I see the ones. What's the next smaller unit? Let's see. Well, beyond ones, there must be tenths, right? And we haven't really changed the value of this number. 51 and 51.0 are the same number. So let's go ahead and think about our units in tenths. So let's see, we had 1, 1, so that's 10 tenths. We bring down our, the remaining tenths, which are none, right? And so we have 10 tenths. And now I have another question, which is, can we make a group of 25 out of our 10 tenths? Nope, can't do it, right? Still can't make a group of 25. So we say in our quotient, right? We were not able to make any groups of tenths, and that means we used 0 times, oops, we used 0 times 25, or 0, of our tenths. That means we still have 10 tenths left. Well, again, I know they don't want me to do as a remainder, so I think we're going to have to find smaller units. Let's see, we've already looked at the tenths. What about our hundredths? Well, we know we don't have any, right? 0 hundredths, and so we go ahead and bring that down. That gives us, we had 10 tenths, or basically 100 hundredths, 100 hundredths. But now I think we have enough to make some groups of 25, 100 hundredths. Let's see, 25, 50, 75, 100. I think we can make four groups, four groups of hundredths, right? Four times 25 is 100, and that uses up all 100 of our hundredths, and we're done with our division. It looks like our quotient is 2 and four hundredths. You know, to see if we're right, I'm going to switch to red and try to do that over here. Two and four hundredths times 25. We're going to have to do our two partial products to see if this works. So let's see. Five times four is 20. So that's zero goes here. Two goes on the line. Five times zero is zero, plus two more is two. Awesome. And five times two is 10. Okay, there's one partial product. Let's see, we've got to do our second partial product. Two tens times four is eight tens, or 80. Two times zero is zero. And two times two is four. And now we need to add our partial products. Let's see, zero plus zero is zero. Two plus eight is 10. Whoops. Two plus eight is 10 that. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, and 1 plus 4 is 5. And then i got to remember something, which is at the beginning I sort of treated this like 204 because essentially I did this. I multiplied by 100 to get rid of that decimal. So then at the end I need to divide by 100 to get back to the right spot. And if we had 5,100 this, at this point and we divided by 100, we would move our place value one, two spots to right here. And sure enough, then, 51 and 51, we've checked out. So I'm going to write my double check that I've done my division properly, and I know that my quotient is, in fact, 2 and 4 hundredths. 
Awesome. Well, let's see. Let's take a look at one more problem from tonight's homework. And this one is a word problem. So we're going to use our read, draw, and write strategy. Let's go ahead and do the reading. Jenny filled 12 pitchers with an equal amount of lemonade in each. The total amount of lemonade in the 12 pitchers was 41.4 liters. How many liters of lemonade would be in seven pitchers? Boy, oh boy, what a mouthful. Well, let's just start at the beginning here. Jenny filled 12 pitchers with an equal amount of lemonade in each. So I'm going to do a tape diagram, I think. A tape diagram that has 12 parts. Let's see, that'd be... Let's see, bump, 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 bump. Let me count those up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 parts. Okay, 12 parts. The total amount of lemonade in the 12 pitchers was 41.4 liters. So, okay, the total amount in the whole thing was 41.4 liters. I'll do that cursive L. And then the question was, how many, how many liters of lemonade would be in seven pitchers? Oh, my goodness. So the question isn't how much is going to be in one. That's what I thought it was going to be. It's how many is in seven. So I think that's seven. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our question is, how many are in seven? So I think what we need to do is figure out, hey, how much is in one liter or one pitcher? And once we know how much is in one pitcher, then we can just multiply that by seven and get this. So I think we just have a, a division problem and then a simple multiplication problem. So let's see. We have our whole, which is 41 point four. And we have 12 pitchers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 pitchers. So I think we need to figure out first how much is in one of these, right? Okay, so let's do that. 12. Let's see. Well, we look at our biggest units, tens. We don't have enough tens to make in groups of 12. But if we look at ones, I think we do. 41. So I think, let's see, 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 12 is 24. 3 times 12 is 36, and that's as high as we can go, because 4 times 12 would be too much. So I think we're going to need 3. 3 ones times 12 is 36 ones. 41 minus 36 is, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's going to be 5. And now, we, don't, we know we did that right, because we can't make another group of 12, but now we can use our next smaller units, so we'll use our tenths, and we could try to divide up 54 tenths. Let's see, 54 tenths divided into groups of 12. Well, this time I know we'd be able to get to 4. Would we be able to get to 5? No, we wouldn't be able to get to 5. So let's see, we put our decimal right where it was before. We think we can make 4 tenths. Let's see, 4 times 12 is 48. Okay. 54 minus, we had 54 tenths. We distributed 48 tenths. That leaves us, looks like, with 6 tenths. We're not done because I know we can't have a remainder. So what's our next smallest unit? Oh, it must be hundredths, right? We had zero hundredths. So we'll go ahead and bring down zero hundredths. And oh, and here we go. 60 hundredths divided by 12 made groups of 12. I think we can make five, right? Five groups of hundredths. So five times 12 is 60. And that means we've used up all of our hundredths. So it looks like we know that every single one of these, 3.14, I'm just going to do a little arrow, that this has 3.45 liters in each one of those pitchers. And now our question, okay, well, two things. I'm going to skip over doing the, uh, doing the checking, right, because we should be doing our checking over here. Oh, okay, fine. Now that you said it, I'll do it. 3.45 times 12 to see if we did our division correctly. Let's see. I'm going to do this quickly. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, our second partial product. 1 times 110 times 5 is 50. Or 5 tens. 1 times 4 is 4. And 1 times 3 is 3. We add our partial products together. We have 0, 4, 11, 4. And then let's see, we had we got this, we got rid of this decimal earlier by multiplying by, by 10 twice. So now we have to divide by 10 twice. And we end up with 41.4. And hey, all right, there it is. All right, fine. I didn't go the lazy route. I did the whole thing. So our division worked out. We confirmed our answer. Three and 45 hundredths liters in each one of our pitchers. And so for our last thing to figure out how many pitch, how many liters are in seven pitchers, we're going to need to just go ahead and multiply three and 45 hundredths times seven. Seven times five is 
35. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 3 more is 31. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 3 is 24. And let's see, again, we had two decimal places that we took away over here, so we're going to add in two decimal places over here, 24 and 15 hundredths. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, I don't have enough room down here, so I'm going to do it in text. Put my keyboard up. There would be 20, what was our answer? 24 and 15 hundredths. 24 and 15 hundredths liters in seven pitchers. Put that there at the bottom. There will be 24 and 15 hundredths liters in seven pitchers. And that means we have done our read, draw, and write strategy. Whew. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.